The Frank Center Podcast. All right, welcome to the Frame Center Podcast. Uh, today we have a special guest coming in, uh, Lara Williams. Uh, she's an encaustic painter, and she's going to give me a, and I think Scott has a little bit of better knowledge on encaustics than I do, but uh, she's going to give us a rundown, tell us a little bit about that, tell us a little bit about a show she's got coming up that she just uh, happened to frame a whole bunch of stuff for. Um, we're excited to uh, be a part of that, and uh, here we go. Thank so, you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Well, um, can you start, can you maybe just give us, a, before we dive into all things encaustics, uh, maybe <laughs> give us a little rundown. bit of a, um, you know, like an idea of your, your history as an artist. Sure. Are you from the South Shore? Sure. Or you... No, um, I'm not from the South Shore. I'm originally from Long Island, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I have lived in Massachusetts now longer than I resided in New York. <laughs> so, um, you know, I came to the Boston area after I graduated school. I went to school at upstate New York for art. Mm. I studied painting and printmaking, um, moved to the Boston area shortly after I graduated mm. in 92, and um, got involved in the art scene in Cambridge and Boston yep. um, at the time. Um, was showing there for quite a while. Um, moved to the South, fast forward 10 years, moved to the South Shore. Um, stumbled upon Hull, Massachusetts, where I reside yep. now, um, and I've been living there ever since. Yep. Um, the light's I, nice in Hull, right? Yeah, very nice in Hull. Big um, art group there, too. Very big art group. I'm actually a board member of the Hull Artist Association oh, okay. as well. Yep. Um, I work with Sandra all the time. I talk yes, to her Yes, Sandy. <laughs> I know she's always in here buying frames yep. and is that a lot Bart, of... Is Bart... Uh, Bart Blumberg's the yep. president yep. of okay. the group. Um, and um, we're, you know, it's it's a nice... What I'm gathering from the South Shore community as I'm meeting people um, is that, you know, it's a nice group of artists. And yep. there's a lot of them. Mm. Um, but we're all pretty supportive of one another. Yeah. there's I mean, there's a ton of art associations. Yeah. That, uh, we talk about this, I feel like, every week uh, when we're recording these. It's like there's all these groups, and the artists tend to be, like, a part of a, of a few of them, if not all of them. Yes, yes. Um, do you mainly show with uh, with the whole group? I mean, the... It, the the show you have coming up at the Pratt is that through South Shore? That's through South Shore Sh- Art Center, mm-hmm. um, and I'm thankful to them. I mean, they gave me the opportunity to show in that space at yep. the Paul Pratt, and um, I am a gallery artist there. Mm-hmm. Um, I juried in about a year and a half ago. I was going to do it right before uh, COVID, but COVID came <laughs> and everything shut down. Yeah. So um, I will mention that I'm new to showing on the South Shore because mm-hmm. I did have a hiatus and I'm kind of re-emerging now yep. mm. after raising twin boys. Uh, so I have twin sons who are now 18 yep. um, and they're at Hull High. Go Pirates yep. because they got a playoff game tonight. One of my sons is playing. There you yeah. go. Um, but um, I've I've F- felt a very or? welcome reception. Yeah. Yes, yes, football. Football. Yeah. football. Um, they're playing tonight. They're playing against Cathedral or Matinon. Oh, Otherwise nice. known as Matinon, right? Yeah. It used to be Matinon. <laughs> I think it's Cathedral now. Um, anyway, um, but it's been a nice reception. And, yep. Um, I've been happy, you yep. know, yeah, joining so in twin and boy, showing again. Yeah. Twin boys would kind of put a damper on the Yeah, like the, it kind of slowed down. Yeah, I, I channeled all my other creative energies elsewhere, you know, and, yep. and part of the raising of them. And yeah. I'm glad to be back at it. And, yeah. Um, that's it's all good. That's great. Um, yeah, so the, the show, I mean, we saw a bunch of the work. Um, that's starting, uh, what, you know, the 20th. Yeah, the 20th is, I'm hosting a reception there on the 20th. Um, it is open now, and it's running mm. through the end of December. Okay, nice. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then <laughs> as far as the encaustics, when you, like, was that always what you worked in, or did you? Not at all. No. Not at all. <laughs> I've worked in a lot of different mediums over the years, but I was classically trained as a painter, oil painter, and printmaker. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I dabbled in some ceramics. Uh, I threw on the wheel. I did a lot in between. Um, 
But the encaustics all came about um, because I read an article in South Shore Magazine, um, and that was around 2019. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated. There was an article about a contemporary artist, a female artist on the South Shore working in the medium. Um, and I was like, geez, that sounds like something I'd really be yep. interested in because um, I do like a lot of mixed media work. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, let me give it a try. So I set up a home studio in my house and I kind of Googled like what are the basics I need yep. to at least try it out because obviously I didn't want to make a huge commitment financially if I wasn't going to like it. Yep. <laughs> um, so I did just that. I started off with like a pancake griddle with a thermometer attached and, you know, a basic... MacGyver it all together. Yeah, yep. MacGyver it all together, which apparently is pretty common yep. um, based on what I see out there. Right. Uh, and I fell in love immediately did with you? the it's medium. A, it's interesting. I feel like when I look at encaustics, you know, because I mean, I, I know when I, when, I, when I see one, I don't know much about the process, but it feels almost like a sculpture painting, almost like a, yeah. it has like a, like a feel of both just because of like the texture and like the. Yeah, which is definitely one of the reasons I really love it mm -hmm. um, because I I can not only paint and mix color um, and apply it like I would when I worked in oils, mm. I can also um, etch within it, I mm -hmm. can carve, so I can do um, interesting things um, with my printmaking background. Um, it's really conducive to making mono prints mm. or incising in it, yep. um, and then almost doing like an intaglio effect w by rubbing ink over it, um, because uh, wherever it's a waxy surface, um, you can get the ink off of it, almost like a, a plate in printmaking. Mm -hmm. um, but wherever you've, you know, etched, so to speak, or incised with a sharp tool, the ink will, will um, adhere and stick. Mm. Um, so the other aspect, like you mentioned with the sculpture, I mean, you can really build up the surfaces yep. really thick. Um, so some of my pieces you'll see, um, if you go to the Restorative Places show, you'll see um, they're really built up. Um, like heavy with medium and wax, and I'll encapsulate um, imagery in it that mm -hmm. I've taken while out walking somewhere, either the beach or maybe like on a trail, like mm -hmm. World's End or something local, um, or I'll embed pieces of paper just for color, mm -hmm. um, just to add additional texture mm -hmm. um, to the imagery. Um, so it's quite it's quite an interesting medium. A lot can be done with it, which keeps me busy and it keeps me inspired. Yep. Um, I love it. I really do. For those who aren't familiar with encaustic painting, like the, mm -hmm. the process behind it might be interesting for how you start yes. piece and how you add in all the colorings and all the different tools you might use for it. So yeah. if you go over a couple of those, I'm sure that would really yeah. help some people understand a little bit more. Yeah, about and we're... I'll go back a little bit about the history too. Yeah. So encaustic is actually a really ancient medium. Mm -hmm. um, it Right now, uh, there's still, the, I guess the most famous would be the Fayem um, mummy portraits, the funeral portraits um, that date back to between like 100 to 300 AD. Oh, okay. Um, and um, they, you can see the vibrancy still within the color of mm -hmm. those works, like they were painted yesterday. Um, so uh, it's quite amazing. Um, the nature, the medium itself is made up of beeswax and a resin, which is a tree resin, so a Damar resin, which acts as a hardener. Um, one combined, uh, like a ratio of eight to one more wax than the more resin. Than the yeah. yeah um, when you, you warm that up, um, beeswax by nature is archival, um, so it's light, fast, naturally, um, it is, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, well, I'll, it'll come to me. But um, it's it's very durable, very okay. durable. I know people are typically concerned, you know, is my painting going to melt yeah, when yeah. it hangs on the wall? Hot like summer that question. or a random sunbeam yeah. that goes and across I, it. Yeah. No, no, it's not going to it's not gonna melt in yep. natural light. Um, it would have to get above 150 uh, degrees in your house mm. in order for the 
the painting to start to melt. Mm -hmm. um, even if it sits and gets sunlight passing across it, that's not going to be an issue. If it was um, in like just direct light for direct light, even you no. know, I mean, you don't want any work, any kind no, of work yeah, in direct obviously. sunlight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if it was to happen, um, again, yeah. I've had pieces shown in the windows at South Shore Art Center yeah. oh, okay. that were just there for a month mm -hmm. um, during the spring and summer, and I had no issues yeah. whatsoever yeah. So, yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. none, no damage. If a storefront window is not going to do it, then yeah. yeah I think pretty it's much... pretty safe to say um, it really has to be prolonged excessive heat. Excessive cold is not good for it either. So mm. basically don't leave it in the trunk of your car and don't leave it out. You don't want to ship them in a shipping container. Yep. Um, for a prolonged period of time um, because they can crack mm. because of the coldness of the wax. Makes them brittle. Makes yeah. Them brittle. Yeah. Yeah. So how, when you're working with it, how like, like that's like a little, um, like an oven or a hot plate? Or, yeah, so that... that's considered a hot pallet. Mm -hmm. um, you plug it in and um, you set it to basically warm. You want to keep, that's another important factor you want to consider. You want to keep the temperature of your pallets um, and the wax always consistent between 160 and 180 degrees is my max that I like yep. to keep it at because you don't want it to burn yep. because when it burns, it smokes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when it smokes, it's not good for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it also will um, change the medium. It will turn it yellow. Is okay. the resin in there at that point? The resin is already in there. Yeah. Um, I can use the resin and the, the mixture, like I have the pellets out here on display. That's just the medium itself. Mm -hmm. that comes pre-made mm -hmm. I can make my own which I've done in the past when I'm making large projects I'll make my own but for convenience sake it's really nice to have the pre-mixed pellets mm -hmm. um, and when that you know when you melt that down you can use it clear mm -hmm. um, you can also mix pigments into it um, such as oil paint um, or you can buy them pre-made in front of the palette which we can't see from our angle, but the camera angle, you'll see there's bars mm -hmm. of color. Mm -hmm. So that is from one of the few companies in the United States that specializes in encaustic paints mm -hmm. and medium. Um, and that is gonna be uh, already pre-made for you with the pigment in it, yep. with the wax, with the resin oh, hardener. So it's just ready to go. Ready to go. Ready it looks go. like a big hard crayon. Sometimes it's much easier that way. And it acts like a hard <laughs> crayon. Um, but you can draw on the hot palette with it. You can mix with those colors. Mm. You can melt them into tin cups and pour. And then do pours. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because I know resins in certain heat situations are, you know, yeah. fumage. Do you have to worry about that? With uh, is that what you were meaning by like? Yeah, sort of so you don't want to... it to smoke because then it can release whatever toxins are yep. in the pigments. Yeah, and that's not good for you. Yeah. So as you know, a general practice, I have, um, you know, it's good. A lot of people don't want to work in encaustic in the winter, unless they have good ventilation in their yes. home, um, unless they can leave their windows open or they have a vacuum suction exhaust, yeah. um, which I have now. Um, that I just place just as a preliminary, more precautionary than anything, because I'm trying to keep my temperatures low. Yes. Um, that can just get rid of, if and when there's any kind of fume, it can mm. get sucked out. Um, but, you know, it's important. Um, I know, I work with residents myself for top coating my acrylic pores afterwards to yeah. give them that kind of glass tile like feel. Yeah. And if you don't have a ventilator box, yeah. You and can... that's even, I think, more. It's just pure resin. What your <laughs> it's just, because the fumes just, that come off it regularly. Yes. I mean, to imagine if you have to heat it. Yeah, you know? it's like sort of when I'm like spraying anything, like mm -hmm. aerosol. It just, it just any kind of varnish. Luckily, the last couple of years have really supplied us well with masks. So, you know, I've yeah. got a couple of ventilator <laughs> masks yeah. that's really yeah. helpful. I have know? a respirator mask I yeah. use as well. Yeah. Um, Better safe the, than sorry yeah, nowadays. You know, you know, it's all just, just in case. Um, what we do for our artwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, so the process is, you know, every layer you put down, you want to fuse. Um, so you have a heat source ready. You can use a butane torch. Mm. I tend to lean towards the... The, the, the heat, heat gun. gun right here mm -hmm. um, because what's important is that every layer you put down you fuse it to the layer below mm -hmm. and that acts as a hardener and also it adheres to the surface yeah. um, another important thing you want to consider is that you're working on a hard substrate so like wood is a great um, surface yeah, something medium. that doesn't have to give to it yeah you don't want anything flex. that's flexible like so canvas would not work with yep. encaustic because you 
the give on it could potentially, you know, damage it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's usually a hard substrate like masonite I like to use. I like to Masonite's use wood. Yep. What about um, plexiglass? Would that give you like an ability to give it more like transparency or would that? I would probably lean towards glass versus do, plexiglass plexi because, because of the heat, the a heat it, aspect yeah, to okay. it, you yeah. know, and the glass can take the heat without yep melting yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Or warping, yeah. That's a good, or warping. Of, yeah you can gesso your your boards as well but you would you need a special gesso you're not going to use an acrylic gesso yep. because acrylic would take away the absorbency of the wood and it's also mm -hmm. important to have some kind of absorbency that okay. you're painting on oh uh, okay so it makes it too smooth and too too too, flat, too uh, yeah, yeah too flat so so you want it to last over time and part of that lasting over time Grip. is having <laughs> some type of absorbent surface that yeah. you're working on which is why wood is great mm -hmm. you know and they do make a primer specifically just for encaustic, mm -hmm. which has less acrylic in it. Mm -hmm. So it has less of that binder in it because the binder itself is what what creates, you know, is what you don't want, sure. so so to speak, on encaustic. Now those acrylic inks there that you use yeah, too? Yeah, like so acrylic inks, um, you know, a that's more of my experimental side. Like sure. I really like to put the acrylic and that more of my mixed media side yeah. of it. Um, before I went into acoustics, I was doing a lot of work with ink on paper. Um, so I continue to like using ink. Mm -hmm. um, and you can apply that to the surface and just let it dry. As long as it's dry, you can coat it again with another coating Layer of wax. Yeah, do yeah. Mm -hmm. you just gotta make sure anything that stays wet, even if you want to use oil on top of it, yeah. you just gotta wait until the oil is fully dry mm -hmm. before you put another coat of, of the wax medium on it. Would alcohol inks worth it? A lot of people use alcohol do inks they? with yeah. encaustic. Yeah. Or a lot of people say to do that, you know, because it's water-based, it dries quickly. Just another thing I played with before, yeah. so I just have yeah. a no, <laughs> absolutely. limited knowledge on you it. Can. But, you, know. you can. Yeah. Um, I just, of course, um, go with what I know, and I like of course, the rich yeah, yeah. colors of the acrylic. Yeah, they have a heavy pigment saturation yeah, in those, yeah. which is great for for doing blends and things like that without yeah. losing any of your uh, right. tonality. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And they come through like under m multiple layers. You can still still see, see them. everything you yeah. know, built up, yeah. which is great. Yeah, because a couple of your pieces that have come in, you know, I've seen several of them. Yeah. That last group that you brought in, the uh, the two that were on the seashore, where it was the layered. Yes. Uh, collage work with the stone yes. and the beach. Those ones are uh, those are I think two of my favorites I've seen from yours. Oh, thank your you. Groups, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Most likely that one, and it was a uh, one you did for a. Um, you actually had it framed and brought right to a couple, if I remember correctly. It was a it was a long, tall one, probably about maybe a 30, 36 inch oh, high, yes, and it had like this void in yes. the center, and you can almost see like a figure standing in like a yes. forested kind of. It always reminded me of the green, you know, the yeah, the, yeah. the the the. the, the mythological creature. Yes, like that was a commission kind of thing, I did so. for somebody. It's just what I saw um, in it. <laughs> and they gave me carte blanche. I could do whatever do what I you wanted. Want. That's I kind of, yeah, yeah, they just gave me the location. They, I went into their house. They showed me the location mm -hmm. and I was able to create something for them. Yeah, because I had to take, I'm like, I got to take, I'm like, all right, guys, yeah. what do you see? And I'm showing all my yeah. friends to like, oh, and they see the same thing. So I was like, okay, yeah. I'm not crazy. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, yeah, it's yeah. In there, yeah. And it's funny because I never saw that until it was it was actually filmed like so i didn't realize it was there <laughs> right as the spirit of the forest kind of situation yes, the green yes, yes, as it's yes, like yes, usually yes, called yes. you know some it's great. maybe like some guide of mine right? i don't know yeah, yeah it's just yeah, really yeah, cool yeah. that's again yeah. just one that sticks out in my mind that i've seen yeah, from yeah, yeah, several yeah. pieces because i do follow you on facebook so um, i do see all your postings yeah. well, on that thank you. And yeah, yeah. see all those so you're always quite busy it seems yeah i am very busy <laughs> you know i'm um busy but happy to be busy because mm -hmm. i really like what i'm doing um and um I'm excited to be showing again, yep. you know, for after so many years yep. of not showing. Um, so it's, it's tough with good. kids to try and be able to do everything you need to do for them and then yeah, try to also do stuff yeah, for yourself. Yeah, and I also, you know, work a full-time job, so... That too. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't work three full-time jobs no. at the time. Now that they're yeah. older, I'm able to... Yeah, a little more time. Yeah, they're yeah. much more independent, and they're like, you know, if, as long as I have food out for them, and, <laughs> you know, they have shelter. <laughs> Start <laughs> the cabinets good. with snack yeah. foods and drinks, and we'll be all yeah, set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So um, that, that's freed up. Quite a, a lot of my time. Yeah. Now, is there a is there a, a number of encaustic artists on the South Shore, or is that like a? You know, there like, are a couple that I know of. Um, it's not like a you know. There's not, not like, like a lot that I'm familiar with, and please forgive me if you're out there listening <laughs> and I'm wrong, but I know of maybe a handful. Yep. In on the 
within um, you know the towns surrounding us that that work with it. Um, I know of one other artists. Hull artist that does, um, but not as her primary mm -hmm. um, medium. And then I know Tina Watson out of Hingham okay, works yep. with encaustic, yep. um, but she also works with I think acrylic. Yeah. Um, mm. And um, I'm trying to think. That, you know, it's not. I know there are other areas of the state that have more. More of it. Like, like more it, of a. Well, I think sometimes that happens with like, you know, like because pastels are big because there's some yeah. of the teachers are, you know, like, in oh, the, maybe, uh, yeah, right. like you know, so like they're, they're more available. Personal, yeah, like big personalities yeah. that people want to yeah. take those. But, you know, I didn't know if there was like a group of uh, encaustic artists. That Not got that together. I'm aware of, <laughs> although I know that the South Shore Arts Center is hosting Lisa Pressman. Mm -hmm. She's coming in um, to teach um, like multimedia with um, pig, the RNF pigment sticks, mm -hmm. which yep. is what I use with the encaustics. And she's also, um, a, uh, what do they call them? Um, like a spokesperson for uh, RNF okay. encaustics. And they're out of Kingston, New York. Oh, okay. um, but she she does, you know, um, workshops throughout the country. Oh, okay. with, you know, um, same with like, I know of Dietlin Vander Schaff. She's up in Portland area, mm -hmm. but she has come through the South Shore Art Center on occasion and yeah. taught a class. That was before she taught before I really got into mm -hmm. encaustics. Yeah. Who was the artist? Do you remember that, that you? You read know, about? I was afraid you were going to ask me that <laughs> because I can't remember. I'm going to have to pull out the magazine, which I didn't get a chance to do before yeah. I came in today. But um, yeah, it's fun though when something like that grabs you and just yeah, it, it really inspired me. And um, because she was using it in a contemporary fashion, I guess I always thought of it more as a traditional mm -hmm. medium. Yep. Um, and you know, uh, therefore I never. It wasn't something that I was exposed to either yep. mm -hmm. when I was in art school or just. Um, yeah, it wasn't like an, there, there's an encaustic class. That yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I even when I was working in Cambridge, I worked at Pearl Art and Craft, which is no longer Pearl Art and Craft. It's like Blick Art now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, back then, like there was no really supplies that I recall. Yeah, Maybe I worked was, for a craft store for like, years. I don't ever remember seeing anything like yeah. that. Like I sold beeswax in the candle yeah. making section. Yeah. I showed all the yeah, yeah all the piece, Blick parts art, of pieces. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, you know. So it's not something that's very common. I think it has had a resurgence. Yeah. From what I've read about um, where there's more people working with now since they have that palette the heated yeah. palette yeah. that's become very popular. The tools and equipment readily available do make it more open for more people to be able yeah. to do this kind um, of thing. Yeah and so. I know a lot of people are interested in it um, yeah. and interested in taking classes in it and of have asked me if I'd be willing to teach class in it. It's always a fun question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah like which I don't. Pressure. I wouldn't. Yeah. No, I wouldn't mind doing it, oh, except I mean, that that would jobs, require yeah, me another job. Yeah. <laughs> that would require me to, you know, um, come up with a plan. Yeah. <laughs> you right? Know? Yeah. They go, oh, how much um, would it cost for the class? I was, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to come up with a plan, a lesson plan. Yes. You know, which I'd have to create. Then you also have to make tools readily available for everybody. You have yeah. To make all yeah. Like maybe. Maybe. Stuff, yeah. So. I would need a sponsor. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Sponsor. But um, yeah, so that's. But you do. I mean, but the idea of teaching is like you're not. I'm a, open you're not to fundamentally it. opposed to no, teaching. No, people no, small no, classes. no. I'm opposed to it. You know? <laughs> small classes are good. That way you can yeah, have a, you very. Know, you're not I'm out into too much. like an intimate, you yeah. know, amount of people. Yeah. You know, like eight or less. I would think it's a good would be size. a good size yeah, that I could manage. A lecture, lecture hall. No, 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 <laughs> no. I'll never say never, but not right now. You yeah. know. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the things are easily, you know, some of the sculpting tools and the heat gun or whatever, but the palette, I'm having a feeling, it would probably be a little harder to make a, like, yeah, like you said, we might have, you might But have you know what? People use what I <laughs> used to, right, when the I starter started set. the starter set, the inexpensive way to do it yep. is to go, you can even go to your locate, local, like, I've gotten a lot of tools out of, like, Salvation Army mm -hmm. or consignment stores, um... You never know what's going to be a tool. Sometimes you, you find know, some fun. Because sometimes you just need a hot plate, mm -hmm. you know, um, which you can find rarely usually at a secondhand store, thrift store. Um, hot plate and a pan to melt, you know, your medium in. Sure. And then a couple of colors or, you know, you can start out with primaries and then you can mix from there. Yeah. Um, and a heat gun, which you can get at the hardware store. Yeah. You know, so it's pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, I started off as a watercolor artist and now I've moved on to... Yeah. doing acrylic pours because one I can set those paints up ahead of time yeah. and then when I have the time to do it I can go ahead and paint them when I have five minutes to myself yeah. like you said it's not always easy watercolor <laughs> takes too long for right. me and I can't come back to it once it's you have to kind of 
go along with it. If you take too long away, you forgot what steps you were on, yeah. where you were off, and you have to start the whole project all over again. Oh, yeah. Again. But like you said, having to MacGyver stuff together and make stuff. Mm -hmm. Even now, I've been doing it for five or six years. I just bought the parts to make a spinning table. Ah. Because a spinning table I find readily available at any of the local stores. Yeah. They're all made of plastic. They're lightweight. They're cheap. They're not they don't, hold, they don't hold the weight. Yeah. And if you want to order a professional one, it's like $120 to $150 right, for right. something that I may only use occasionally. Yeah. And you're not sure. Some people just aren't sure. Like yep. I wasn't when I started with this, whether or not I'd pursue it. Mm -hmm. um, it just so happens that like I'm crazy about it. So yep. that's all I want to work in. Now, no, it shows because like know? I said, the amount of pieces you you have come out yeah. of it, I'm sure it must be. Yeah. Uh, it's very inspiring. And do you tend to work itself. like a size that you would like to work better? Like you like I'm smaller? I'm one of those people or, I'm like all over the map. Okay. You know, like I go big, I go small, I go tiny. Tiny, uh -huh. you know, it's whatever pretty much whatever you. I have, you know, available to paint on <laughs> yeah. at the time. I've got these three colors yeah. left. Yeah, in yeah, this yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, there is, I do like square. Like, okay. for yep. some reason, that's my latest thing is like, probably because they're available now, you can yep. just get a square. Yeah, so the I more like, unusual size than the traditional yeah. rectangular 8 I like 10, the 2 by 2 I've decided I really like the 2 by 2 and mm -hmm. I like the 12 by 12 which is I have right now as a sample of a piece I'm working on mm -hmm. propped up there. Um, I, I don't know, for whatever reason, um, I do like that. And then, of course, yeah, the landscape the format. Too, the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a 12 by 12 right there, that piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a square, too. Mm -hmm. the, the monotype I did over there. They seem they feel more interesting, I find, when people yeah, look at them. Even our know. photographs lately, a lot of photographs are being done in the square format. Yeah. Just because it's the unusual thing to the eye. It's the thing that it's yeah. what a lot of formats are shot in lately. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's Instagram. Well, Instagram that's Instagram, Instagram it's, is to blame. Yeah. It's been a huge influence on that. Because yeah. we were talking to Sean Goss in our first couple yeah. of interviews, and he said the same thing. That has changed the formulaic equation for standard printing now mm -hmm. so that it makes it more readily available for a square so even our even our frames yes. that we carry up here in our ready-made we have yes. a variety from which i've bought a few in the past <laughs> yeah. you know but that's just it be bring you bring up a good point because when i am going to post something on social media which i only got into because of covid to be honest with you but it's been a great thing oh it's i mean i think for artists i think it's you know that was my only people yeah, yeah um but when i would go to paint something in a landscape format it would cut it off <laughs> yeah. yeah or you'd so, have two bars or, I, of like or dark, like it would yeah. look really small yeah. you know if i had to reduce it to fit in their frame yep um so maybe that's another reason that subconsciously i've gone to the yeah. square format more so but i do you still do landscape format oh sure yeah in commissions i do a lot of landscape um i do have pieces in my show at the library at the classic library that are landscape format plus i mean my inspiration is usually based off of the land in some way mm -hmm. so yep. um you know that's that's where i go that's where i go to be mindful and uh that's what i bring back with me and to my studio when i think about what i'm painting or get lost again in those same imagery when mm -hmm. I'm painting. When well, I'm that's the thing, nature studio. provides the best blended, you know, color yeah. palette there yeah. is. Yeah, so it's, it's calming. So it's yeah. it's like it's calming when I'm out there walking, and it's calming when I'm thinking about it in my studio and, and, and putting down imagery about it. You yeah, know? So. I'm sure it gives you great ideas for it. Yeah, yeah. And is that, it, no, the show is called Restorative Places, and is that, you know. Yes, I so, thought that was fitting. Yeah. <laughs> You, you know, there, there. Are, it's all, land, all landscape. Landscape based. Um, yeah. There are, there are some, you know, um, some abstract, some more um, representational work in that show, but all based off of imagery in my head about landscapes, places I've been, my favorite places to go, mm -hmm. that yeah. type of thing. My Try mood, to, you know, yeah. the mood of the air at mm -hmm. the time usually is how the abstracts come about because it's just, you know, I'm capturing more the atmosphere or the feeling I felt well, versus what I saw. Mm -hmm. you know? twin, twin boys, a full-time job. You, know, you <laughs> yeah. probably need to get to a restorative place. I do, uh, as yeah. much as I in, can, in, you, you know. know? In a, a, a quiet place to re yeah, restore. I think yeah. we all need that. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a great place to unplug, you know, to just just unplug yep. you know we're constantly being inundated or at least i feel constantly inundated um by just you know all different um stimulus nowadays yep. and it's a good place i just find that it's an immediate release of anxiety yep. and stress for me when i go outside you yep. change a different headspace yeah to yeah think right away you yeah. know uh feeling yep. the air and hearing the waves or 
listening oh, to the, the trees. Seas- the seasons definitely have an effect yeah. on too, the pieces that oh, you do, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The, 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 the color palette and probably everything. Probably tricky, tricky to work on locations with in costumes. Yeah, no. So <laughs> when I do yeah. wind up working on location, I'll bring out like my acrylics. Yeah. And um, and, or when I'm traveling, you know, I'll bring, you know, pen and ink and acrylic and, yeah. you know, some watercolor paper or something. Sure. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, start and, uh, and, and just do like more sketches and, and uh, yeah stuff like that so. and you said uh, you know we were men- mentioning how instagram's kind of you know maybe it's behind uh changing your into a, f- a square format some of your your works um where people can find you on instagram you have a uh, yeah so my handle, handle? <laughs> handle? Yeah. i guess that's what you call it my <laughs> handle on instagram is at lara williams fine art have you found yeah. that that's been a, that that's been a helpful tool as far as showing people your work? Yeah, and, like, and and it's been in it's been reciprocal because I mean I've been able to show my art even when we couldn't show it in person, mm. mm-hmm. and I've also met a, like a whole community. Speaking of community of encaustic artists, I've met a lot of people from around the world. Yeah, that are encaustic artists. Sure. Um, as well as other artists. So er, it's kind of something I look forward to, like every morning or every night when I look at my phone and go to Instagram, it's like a gallery. Of just people's of just works and other things. other people's that, works yep. that I might not ever get to see otherwise. Very true. So, but also can be inspirational and help you, you know, yeah. finding ideas and color and yeah, different yeah, design yeah. elements. So it's like a like little that. community of artists mm-hmm. out there that are at my fingertips, you know. So that's the one good thing about technology, I guess yep. you'd say. But those yeah. are a good group, too, to introduce because then a lot of people will go to those things for looking looking at different people's pieces, even if yeah. they're not artists themselves. Yeah. I know I started, like, again, same thing. I I do paintings, and I put them up, and, you know, a few friends here and there, they yeah. comment on it, but they don't really know about art, so it's not like, right. you know. Right. But then I put it on a, a site that is... Yeah. You know, everybody pours, and that's right. that, and it's like, right. pff, every, you know, you know yeah, you get all a of a sudden I'm like, all right, why did I get 200 likes all of a yeah. sudden? It's like, because it's in a group of everybody looking for that same... Like-minded. Like-minded you know. individuals, yeah. you know, so I'm sure that really helps, too, help to it does. broaden your content, it does. broaden your ideas, and make, like you said, yeah. contacts all over the world. Yeah, it's a good, right, and it's a good place, too, for people that have purchased from me to check in. Yep. You know, I've sold some work, actually, just going on Instagram, which is kind of unusual, you right. know, not being able to see it in person, but, um, you know, they usually it's to people that have work of mine, you know, yep. already. So they're familiar, um, so they're familiar mm-hmm. with what they'll, ex- what they expect to see when yeah. they arrive in person. I they know guess. your qualities. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. So hopefully. Yeah, no, yeah. I think a lot of people, I mean, you know, I think that there's a lot of sales being made on uh, social media, yeah. you know, and it's a good outlet. That's, these last few it's years a been a big, were, were a big art year. I know anything that yeah. had to do with the home or re, refurnishing yeah. or changing yeah. or building yeah. how you want your home to finally look because everybody was stuck Everyone inside. Everyone was stuck it. inside. I'm going to be stuck inside. I'm going to look at something I want to look at. I and know. it was really big for a lot of artists and yeah. a lot of Well, that must have been artists. good for your business too, right? We yeah. did not yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. It didn't stop at all. awesome. But, awesome. but we also got a lot of new people that we have that come in here now because yep. of it. You know, people never would have thought to do anything like that before. Yeah, and which, I think they're hooked a little bit, too. Yeah. Like, I've had people buy original art that said they've never bought original art in their lives. Yep. And now, like, they're looking forward to getting their next piece. Well, I think so, that's, that's great. Yeah. You know, I mean, one of the reasons why, you know, that, I mean, I don't know. The podcast, I think, originated just because I wanted to, you know, carry on and talk maybe. But <laughs> I think that, like, one of the, the ways we've kind of, like, spit off is like kind of trying to educate people about buying art, buying mm-hmm. original art and, like, you know, making that message out there, getting to talk to artists like yourself yeah. and, you know, kind of expose them to, you know, the like the community of, you know, of, in, like, I think when people buy original art and like you put a piece of original art next to like some thing from uh, home goods i mean there's no con you know no 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 contest. comparison yeah. no and no. and there's like a you know and there's a story behind it too and yeah. like i think people hearing like the story like seeing one of your pieces and then like you know understanding what goes into it i think that that's like it makes it more meaningful to you know to the person makes it it makes it gives it the piece depth in a sense yeah it's it's always nice to know i in fact i like to know who's buying my artwork too because mm-hmm. it's just nice to know like to meet the person yep. see you know um, see where one get, of your babies went right right see where one of my babies went nice to know too like you know when you meet all these wonderful nice people you know it's nice to know that it's going into a nice home so yeah. to speak yeah um but it's just nice yeah it's it's just great 
great because you get you get the social aspect and you get to know who's appreciating your work and it kind of gives you a push to keep going and it's all good well having know? that connection with somebody too that you sell your work to i mean i think of it all the time with the frames like that's almost like a billboard in a sense and it, you know yeah when, oh, and one of our you know like a frame we frame something and it ends up in somebody's house and it looks really sharp and it's just, it's a statement of the work we do so you know like and then you know oh my god that looks great um you know when, where'd you get you that yeah you know, where'd you get it done <laughs> mm-hmm. and you know i mean in a lot of cases you know we're like a finishing touch or something but you know oh that's you know so and so's piece and you know i got it you know yeah the you know dave framed it at the frame center or you know scott yeah. you know helped me pick something out and that kind of you know it builds, you know, and, you know, everything keeps on growing off of that. And then, you know, somebody that maybe didn't come in here that saw it in somebody's house now, you know, now knows of us, you know, and I imagine the same is probably true with, um, you know, people that are collecting art, you know, someone comes into their house, they see one of your big pieces on their wall and mm. it's like, wow, that's, you know, right. that's striking. Who did that? Who did that? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, Lara did it, and you know this yeah. is her this is her handle on Instagram. Yeah, Check right, it out, exactly. You know? I've sold a, actually. I've had a lot of clients come to me that way because they know someone that has a piece, and yep. then you know that it turned them on to even look me up, and then you know they come out to maybe my open studios or they yep. reach out to me for a gallery visit, mm-hmm. and um, and it goes from there. It's like a little network yep. Of, yep. of you know people. And when people trust you, they're going to ask you your opinion on certain things, too. So, like, say you sold a piece and it wasn't framed and they just bought it as is, you know, where would you go to frame it? Or same thing. Somebody buys looking for a piece of artwork. We say the same thing. It's like, oh, you lean photographs for landscapes. Call this person. You need this. this." We have the whole and we have the whole board downstairs of everyone's cards and things like that so that we can recommend that, you know, because people do come in looking for it all the time. Yeah, it's a great resource. In fact, I think I was turned on to you all by another artist when I first started needing to reframe work again, Mm -hmm. you know, so that's how I... Without going to a corporate, you know, yeah, right, place without, you know. without saying names, yep. you know, it's not the same service and, and you know, it customer is, service yeah. and warmth. You don't get the same warmth. Yeah. You know, I've that worked you, for them. And I, I wish know. I'd gotten those years back and worked here those that whole time. Yeah, it would have right. been a whole different experience. Yeah. So it's just a nice place. Um, you get to know the person that's helping you. Um, you know, and every time you come back, you see the same people. Yeah, yeah we do. And we get to know nice everybody by their first names. We yeah. sometimes know their kids. We know it's like, oh, you yeah. know, we said, you know, how'd you, how'd this, how'd the football game go the other night? Right. You know, things like that, <laughs> you know, things along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, which but, I think is a little bit better than any. Yeah, I think that's what we're trying to do here is provide, you know, like it's an experience. Right. Like, you know, like, I mean, that, that's, you know, more, more so than, you know, you know, coming in and just put slapping a rectangle yeah. around something you know it's it's uh, an experience and it should be enjoyable it well, shouldn't really, be like you know sorry to interrupt no, but i'm worry. really <laughs> i'm really loving your whole gallery space upstairs now yeah. mm. and when i first saw this podcast i was like oh what a great idea you know because i know i love like tapping in like i'm usually searching for like you know, people talking, artists talks. There's another gallery up in Portland that I've been following that does um, a similar thing, interviewing yep. artists and so forth. And it's very interesting as an artist to hear what other artists have to say and know you're not alone in a lot of ways. You yep. know what I mean? I so. think it's fascinating too. Like for me, um, you know, I, I, there's a ton of artists that like growing up in the South Shore, and gro- yeah. growing up in this business, like I've known artists, you know, and some of them I, you know, I don't even think of them as artists. I just think of them as, you know, that's, you know. You know them. Yeah, yeah, people, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that, that them, like, artists being exposed, like, this, you know, interesting things about people. Like, my friend Michael uh, Coyne, and he's like, he's, you know, people see his paintings. Oh, but, you man, know, yeah. like, like I, I know I met him first from playing hockey with him. And yeah, it's, yeah. you know, like, there's just, like, interesting stories behind people. Right. And I think that that... Maybe that helps with connections to some people finding artists, yeah. especially people that maybe don't, you know, yeah. aren't big into like art community or collecting art, you yeah. know. Oh, that's my friend, you know, he's a painter right. and like right. I want, you know, or, you know, that's, you know. A lot of people don't know how to find a, find an artist that, you know, that they're looking for. Yeah. Like they're so used to buying stuff in a store or online. Right, that or they think of 
artist is only existing in museums right. or <laughs> there's like this whole thing like like almost like it's untouchable in right? a sense. Exactly. You know what I mean? They, they don't, don't think of them as regular people exactly. doing everyday things as well as painting or drawing. Same or thing what for have stopping you. in here. They don't yeah. think that maybe their thing is worth framing that yeah. way. It's only right. a small family photo. It's like it doesn't matter. If it matters to you, yeah. it should yeah. look good and be on the wall the way you want yeah. it to be. That's, That's what we're, we're here trying for. trying to make artists feel like regular people. That's why we drag them <laughs> out back. And make them shoot hockey pucks at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Get on the ice. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think that that's a big, uh, you know, a big part of it. I think that uh, from like to put the art and like the framing together too. Like I think a lot of times people are intimidated to come into a frame, like into a frame store. Yep. Um, you know, they don't know what they're going to get themselves into. You know, they don't know what to expect. Right. I mean, that's why one of the reasons we have done the shows upstairs with uh, like the schools for years. Um, you know, get people in the door, and then it like it's. A, you know, it's a positive experience. Yeah, boost um, the kids too. And then they come, you know, and then they come back, and you know, it's not intimidating. Um, right. So the experience thing, I think, is key, and you know, making sure you're know, trying to make sure that everybody has a good one. I mean, yeah, yeah. How that often it's comfortable, an yeah. envi a comfortable environment. You but know? the space up here has been great. I think you very know, well received. To, to me, um, you know, I want to. Like I want to be like a big part of the art community yeah. of, of the, you know of the community in general, yeah. and uh, you know trying to like have our website turn into something where people they want to like explore a little bit about artists and this and that and like see you know see people like uh, a sample of people's work before like clicking through to their website. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's gives a great idea. An art bio you know? page with everybody's some pieces yeah, that have been up have in the gallery space. Yeah, you have all of your artists. Um, that you frame for yep oh, yeah, um, yeah. with you know some of their work and like you said a link to whatever yeah this way they can see what was on display and then with a link saying like check out what they're working on now yeah. at you know yeah. and yeah. keep everybody up to up to date yeah, yeah, I got a lot of crazy I, ideas I, I think art shouldn't be standoffish nope. you know, I'm one of those people it's you know I, th I think everyone has a creative side in them like and I feel like it's one of those things that we're not necessarily taught in our society here in the United States to do like it's I, nothing against sports. I've played sports. I yeah, love mm -hmm. sports. My kids play sports. <laughs> but it's definitely, there's more of an emphasis on that in schools versus being the creative yep. The things that fund the schools, You yeah, know, music, unfortunately. arts, unfortunately, don't get as funded as yeah. much as... I mean, I, I, you know, I have a sports background, too. I get kids to play sports. And I think there's a lot of important lessons to be learned from that. Oh, sure. Yeah. But there's... Uh, but... It does seem like that gets all the funding because it's right. like it, maybe it's the yeah. entertainment aspect, yeah. but like art seems to be the one that gets cut. Yeah. And there's so many important like creativity, you know, not being like In independent thinking yeah. mm -hmm. and like there's the whole sports are great for the whole team work yeah. and, you know, working with people and social aspect and all that. But um, it would be nice if, if everything could get funded fully. Yeah, right, you know? yeah. Everything That's had all. its own turn. Yeah, you know, everyone had choices. The, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If there was just more money <laughs> to go <laughs> yeah. around. If only, yeah. If only. Yeah. In a perfect world. <laughs> right. So. Well, you know, maybe we get there someday. You know, but, you yeah, know, yeah. We're uh, starting here at the Frame Center. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All start it takes is that Powerball. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the podcast gets big, then we start funding. The, uh, it's actually true. You know, it wouldn't be a terrible yeah, thing. No, but you have great ideas, and you know, sponsors and scholarships and things along those lines would be nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we got we got high expectations. High, high That's hopes. Right, not bad. Shoot for the you stars. Know, you do. You, do. you just got to do it. You got to try it and see what sticks and. And see what works, and uh, you yeah. know, just keep going, keep yeah. going. Now, do you? Um, we always ask people too when they're in um, about the works that they have at their at at home. Mm -hmm. Now, do you? What kind of? Uh, do you, you strictly in caustics? Is that all you allow in the house? No, you know, no, no. Who, I have a art? very eclectic taste um, yeah. when it comes to art, and I have. A lot of art by other artists um, yeah. that I know or not don't know, but mostly people I yep. do know. So you buy, you're, so you're not intimidated to buying art. No, yourself. I love. I actually, it's part of my mission, sort of, so to speak, is when I um, sell a piece, I put aside some money to be able to buy a piece. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So That's a great, you know, I like that a lot. It adds to my collection. I enjoy supporting other artists. Yep. Well, and inspiration for yourself. Yeah, and you, can you have know, something nice so to look at. Yeah, yeah, so I try and you know um, buy art whenever I can from yep. other people and. 
you know, it, it, it rotates like I'm one of those people and I hear this a lot too is, oh, I wish, but I had no space on my wall. I'm like me there, there, you know, yeah. but <laughs> I like, like to rotate stuff around. I'm always constantly rehanging, hanging this here, there. And the other thing and um, bag of hooks, a can of touch up paint. And yeah. 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 A little bit of spackle and exactly. paint. You're all good <laughs> to go. Start with a small painting. Exactly. Yeah. Bigger, bigger. Just, bigger. Yeah. Just cover the holes up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's much yeah. easier that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Like Never my latest, my latest, um, uh, my latest acquisition, I'll call it, yep. um, was at Open Studios in Cohasset this past weekend. I bought a piece by Jocelyn Dana Thomas, okay. um, and I just love it. I fell in love with it, so I had to have it. So I, so I bought it. So and that was out of my own funding from yep. art sales. Uh, I love, I, I love that idea. Yeah, you know, yeah. like you know, yeah. like taking a portion of the uh, yeah. of the proceeds and putting it. Towards yeah, right. I know because otherwise it just goes towards materials. It goes back into the back business, into the business and yeah. back into <laughs> materials and or to you know um, to the tax man. You yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> so, you need their yeah. two cents yeah. worth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the, in, uh, do you have a favorite piece at home, or, or do you are you, oh Sophie's choice? It's usually my favorite piece is usually either the last one I painted or, um, you know, the last piece I acquired. <laughs> so yeah. you know, right now my favorite is Jocelyn's because I just got it and it's yep. fresh. Yep. Um, and the last piece I painted um, is probably my favorite of my own. You yeah. know, is that one that will be in the show? Yes. Yes. How many pieces are in this show anyway? Uh, twenty three pieces. Twenty three pieces. In the show. Varying yeah. sizes and styles. Varying sizes, um, and some are more representational, others are more abstract. Oh, that's great. And yeah. then there's a mix of mixed media paintings, some straight encaustic pieces, and um, some monotypes as well. To on, show your whole on paper, it's kind yeah. of like a range. Yeah. Of was work. it a challenge to hang? Or? It was a very big <laughs> challenge to hang, and I got to give a shout out to my husband Donald Williams because. Without him, I probably would have been in a pool of tears on the ground because um, the hanging system they have there, I'm not used to. I'm used to, again, wires, nail, right? spackle, yep. and paint. Mm -hmm. And they had a hanging system with wires. And, oh, yes. and I wasn't, you know, I'm just not used to hanging on that type of system. And he's handy, so he was able to, you know, make it work. And I kind of just directed and said, okay, that looks good there, this, and let's this try this here. Um, and he was very patient, and he um, helped me hang the show. Well, that's so, great, though. Yeah. I don't have to shoot us a, a picture of those of those yeah. pieces. You know, when we when we cut up the Instagram uh, Instagram or the stories, you know, so some people of can see of, stuff. Of pieces of what? The, of, the, of the artwork uh, that's yeah. at the show. Yeah. Okay. Some yeah. Of the pieces from the show. Should I include a link as well, like yeah. the link I have to my webpage that oh, gives yeah. you more yeah, yeah. information? Yeah, yeah. This guy's anything you have, and right. I can, the more right. I have, the better off. Yeah. Okay. I got that up on the website right now, so awesome. that people can check the calendar out yeah. and awesome. find out when yep. the shows are. Yep. Next Sunday. Yep. Sunday the twentieth. Months are flying 30. by here. They They're are. Just going, they yeah. are. And now I'm like, I wanted to get a piece into your show coming up yep. here, like the art off the wall you're yep. doing, right? Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Duxbury show is coming up. Um, and then the Art Center just announced another <laughs> show coming yep. up. And anyway, I'll be back they all, soon they to all get more pieces to fall, frames. They, That's they, what's going to happen. You they know? seem to all fall around the same they time. They do. It's We've like, had yeah. this conversation with a few people, and I had one earlier today uh, with someone. It would be almost nice to have some sort of a, like advisory board or like a representative from each, you know, each group. Yeah. But it, I think there's just too many and there's not enough days or yeah. not well, enough times. Yeah, well, that's part of the problem is, conflict. like, it, all these groups are volunteer mm. for the most part, yep. um, with some exception. But there's so much planning that they're doing for their own groups, like, to cross-pollinate and plan for all the others. Um, it would be nice. I love that idea. Yep. Yeah. Um, I just don't know how to make it happen. No. And now our and calendar I'm, will be the thing that allows people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we cover so, them all. So, right. So, I guess... You know, other than there's usually not much going on in the winter, like yeah. January, February, March. Maybe some yeah. people can just start doing more shows then. Well, I think when the spring shows start up again, a lot of people have had those couple of months where they're stuck indoors yeah. or things like that yeah. that they've been creating and right. making stuff. As yeah. long as the weather permits it, for yeah. especially Pe for what you People need have been saving up money, too, right? Because yeah. everyone spends through Christmas. Right after the holidays. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is January is the worst month. <laughs> 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 Halloween Everyone's is the start of all bills. this. Yeah. The last day of Halloween, boom! And the months are just the weeks are just gonna fly by for yeah. the next next couple. Of so it true. Makes it really tr trouble so to get true. everything set up yeah. and done. Yeah. So but. back to buying artwork, um, you know, just because I always try and now where where do you go to look for artwork? Because I wonder, you know, as we're talking about this, some things are flashing through my head. 
And, you know, maybe that's another thing that holds people back from buying artwork, not Being knowing where. It. Yeah, not knowing where they go to, you know, to look for it. Um, you know, you, you yeah. said there was an open studio in Cohasset. Yeah, so I like to go to visit other art associations and other uh, community open studio events yep. when I can make it. Sure. Yep. Yeah. No, um, and that's always, always nice down. because, like you had brought up before, it's always nice to know the artist or meet them yep. in person. Um, and there, it, 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 you know, it gives you that provenance of knowing the person that painted it and knowing where it came from yep. kind of thing. Um, so, you know, it always makes the artwork a little more special when you yep. buy from someone you've met. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a good place to go. Um, galleries are always a great place to yep. go. Um, the art I, associations, I think, are... You know, art are, associations, shows, you yep. know, those are always great. You know, I've bought um, a couple of pieces that way. Um, We've always said the barn sale is a great way to start off the... Uh, the North River has that great sale mm -hmm. every year. Um, you know, I usually, I, I had a bin in it this year, you know, um, that I've, was fun. Um, how, how'd, that, how'd you do there? Good. Yeah. I brought in like 20 pieces. I kept them, you know, priced like really reasonably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I sold 18 out of 20 or something like that. So <laughs> I think I did good. Selling 90% you know? of the pieces is not too shabby. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did well. But I kept it really like... Inexpensive. But the good thing about know? that is it exposes you to a whole new group of people at yeah. that point, which then later on they may need other pieces right, down the road. Right, right. I made some good connections that way, yeah. too, because someone might have bought a piece from me that way, and then yeah. they reach out, and um, sometimes fellow artists do it that way. I mean, yep. you know, it's a good way to, that's in a good place to buy art. Yep. Um, the gallery has been a great thing in Hull. The cooperative gallery, Gallery yep. Nantasket, has yep. been a great thing. I'm a part of that, so I show my work there all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm there year-round, so I'm constantly popping new work in and out of there and selling out of there. And then I also get to see all the artwork from all the other artists because mm -hmm. there's about 25 um, artists at all times that are, and we change over this show quarterly. Yeah. So it's constantly, constantly changing. Um, and you get to see all the other artists' artwork coming in. So I've bought work through there. Yeah. Um, and it's another good place for people to go because it's very low key um, and it's open year round. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah, Nintask, it's a big draw area too. So I'm sure yeah. it gets a lot of exposure that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's definitely gaining in popularity, that place. You know, it's yeah, kind it of. It had a lull for a little while. I hope that yeah. things were taken down and. Now things, new things yeah, are going in, yeah. so hopefully that'll... Hopefully, you know, um, it keeps improving. Carousel's still going strong down there, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, oh yeah, that's like... <laughs> it's a focal point down there. It uh, is, uh, the destination carousel. Point. Yeah, and the arcade for now yep. is still there. Oh, the arcade's still there? Oh, jeez. Yeah, 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 yeah. And forever. then there's a lot of beer gardens now and oh, okay. so forth, you know, and the hotel is great. We show a lot at the hotel. Um, at least the whole artist group and so forth just yes. shows down at yeah, the hotel. I get notifications yeah. from there all the time. Yeah. So. Um, but there's there's a lot of places, which is great about having all these different artist yep. associations. Yeah, you guys just had an open studio down there not too long ago, didn't you? Yeah, we did one in July and right. September this yeah. year. Yeah, it was. And then Classic did one, I think, in August, and they just had one in November. Hmm. Um, and I'm not sure who else. South Shore, Co South Coast did one but i didn't make it and that was somewhere between the two between both of those yeah, the fourth yeah. floor artists fourth floor is coming week, up yeah, yeah next weekend 19th, yeah. yeah yeah next so. weekend yeah so. so yeah well Thank you for coming. You're welcome. In. My I'm pleasure. glad you brought in the I visual think, aids. This yeah. really does help kind of yeah. explain yeah. where it says, well, take some pictures. I think pictures you have a football game to get to. Right? I do. Oh, I do. I got to make it to kick off. <laughs> go, uh, in go Pirates. Go yep. Pirates. <laughs> you know, it's a big game. It, they're undefeated this year. And oh, let's geez. hope so. that they make it to the Super Bowl. Awesome. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. So, well, I think I would, luck. Yes. I would encourage people to check out your show. And I would, uh, do. Scott will put some stuff in the in the the Throw a bunch of keywords and a whole bunch of other things things in there for people are searching for it so great yeah. and, i appreciate and, uh, it you know at at laura at lara, at lara williams. williams fine art and uh website and website is simple and same thing lara williams fine excellent well yeah check it out yeah thanks for having me thank i really you. appreciate You're very it welcome oh, no. and thank you everybody for listening to us today and we'll catch you next time all right see ya